One of an awakening being's most deepest yearnings is the call for like-minded souls to share a fulfilling, nourishing bond with. These connections differ in what form they take depending on what the terms of our soul contract are. So today I will be covering the different levels of soul family, what those relationships look like, and at the end, I will be going over the difference between our soul family and karmic partners. In the larger scheme of things, we are all eternal energy, and it is this energy that animates all of creation. So from that perspective, all of creation could be considered our soul family. That said, each of us are unique expressions of the multiverse, and throughout the soul's journey, we are attracted to other souls who occupy the same wavelength we reside on. Ultimately, all there are is waveforms on an electromagnetic spectrum, and these waveforms are visible to our eyes only within a certain range. There is far more of what makes up reality that is not visible to us than what is. And just like there are radio waves, gamma waves, and ultraviolet waves that all vibrate within a specific bandwidth or frequency range, so too do souls reside on different wavelengths. In alchemy, we call this harmony between like forces sympathy. In the spiritual community, as well as in quantum physics, we call it resonance. So on one level, our soul family is anyone who we share an affinity with to the degree that our consciousness occupies the same wavelength. Within our greater soul family, these are the more dharmic relationships, meaning they reflect the harmony that one experiences by vibrating at the same frequency as one another. These are the connections where we share similar perspectives, life purpose, passions, and belief systems with one another. These are the people who we just click with automatically to the point that words are not even necessary all of the time in order for us to convey ourselves to the other. This is our soul family in the broadest sense of our term. Yet this is not the only criteria that makes up our soul family. This is just the most well-known and therefore the most common level that is referred to when we speak on this topic. The second level of soul family is what's also considered our star family. Many beings at this time on earth are not exclusively human as you may already know. In fact, to only have human incarnations would be quite a very narrow paradigm in the total scope of this galaxy, let alone this universe. When a higher dimensional being from another star system incarnates as a third dimensional human, the general name for this is called the star seed. There are millions of higher dimensional beings on earth at this time, helping to awaken humanity and elevate the frequency here through our respective callings. So this level of our soul family resides beyond the earth arena and includes anyone a part of our multidimensional network or team that we know from beyond our physical incarnation. The main challenge with these connections is that the frequency here on earth is so dense compared to higher states of consciousness that it can be difficult to communicate with them or feel the love and assistance that our star family transmits to us. But as our dormant psychic abilities start getting activated, communication can become easier. It's also important to note that not all of the universe uses the same paradigm or phrases for one concept. We typically have this idea that there is one structure that adheres to our terminology throughout the whole universe, and that's not the case. For instance, you can know beings from other dimensions before your human experience, and let's say one being has never had a physical incarnation in the third dimension, but they agree to be your guide in this lifetime because their energy is very useful to have as a resource. The whole universe may not use the same terminology to call that relationship a soul family as the title of that but this may be how we conceive of this connection. Another more esoteric interpretation of this concept of soul family has its origins at the level of being known as the monad or the oversoul. The monad is best described as a ray of creation, just like sun rays emanate outward from the center of its source to encompass a sphere. Each ray of consciousness emerges from ultimate reality, emanating outward at a certain torque, which has a certain rhythm, which creates a certain temperament that holds a certain perspective or facet of infinite consciousness. In other words, the oversoul is a fractal expression of all that is. If ray of consciousness is still too abstract, then you could just think of the monad as the beginning of the fractal. Ultimately, the monad is an individualized expression of all that is. The monad branches out into individual soul units that all share its unique essence. This is the deepest level of soul family. The souls who which we share an oversoul with are the ones who have the closest soul core frequency to our own. In fact, more than that, they are aspects of ourselves and we of them. These connections cannot help but elevate our own consciousness and accelerate our spiritual evolution due to the amount of awareness one gains through the mirroring that takes place. 
It's not guaranteed that you'll meet part of this group of soul family in this lifetime unless you have a soul contract to do so. Part of our soul family at this level are incarnated off planet, as the monad or oversoul can hold many concentrated points of attention at once, each focal point exploring a different dimension of reality. The fourth level of soul family are the people in our life that we have soul contracts with, which includes souls on any wavelength and at any phase of consciousness. These are how the overarching themes that we come into this life to master get played out. I'll mirror to you your full power. You betray me so I can have a breakthrough. I'll leave you so you can learn the true value of self-love. All of the major themes that we experience in a lifetime are learned through other souls who have agreed to play some part in our life that is a pivotal agent to our personal development. Now, this does not mean that every single thing in our life is written out from start to finish. These soul contracts are specific to each person's lessons, goals, desires, and karma. There's also disappointing or optimal ways that these contracts can play out based on our personalities, our life conditions, and our free will. This is the most relatable level when talking about the concept of a soul family, because at this level, our soul family is like a giant improv tribe or the cast of a movie where we are a group of actors that all share a script. But instead of each person having the same script, we all have a version of the script where we are the lead actor of our own movie. And every other person in our soul family plays a unique role in one another's script. And we trade off in each lifetime playing out a different dynamic with one another. In one life, we may be brother and sister. In another life, we may be best friends or a mentor. All different kinds of arrangements are made within this grouping. For instance, if a soul desires to awaken in this life, they can make a contract with a soul on a different wavelength than theirs to assist them. And although this isn't our soul family in the truest sense of the term, it would be considered our soul family at this level of an improv tribe because we are playing a key role they need fulfilled in their particular journey. This is also the level where karmic relationships enter the scene because at this level of reality, we are not just choosing our lessons and experiences from our own full spiritual sovereignty. We get pulled or magnetized to situations, events, and relationships that we need to learn from for our soul's development. Karma is unconscious momentum. The momentum of our actions, temperament, and perceptions are all aspects of our soul's resonance that create patterns. We typically think of ourselves as one being, but we are more like a quartz crystal. We have different facets or aspects to us, and each of these facets are contributing to the momentum that generates our karma. We come into this life with whatever remains unlearned and unprocessed within our soul complex, as well as our talents and whatever we have already mastered. So we have different points of attraction. Therefore, our karma is not fixed nor singular. We are always being drawn to people, places, and things that represent some theme we wish to heal or wish to fulfill. Much like the grieving cycle itself, there are facets of our consciousness that need some form of closure which is ironic because our energetic wounds, also known as karmic imprints, leave openings in our auric field that energetically represent an area of our soul that's lacking the love of our awareness. So seeking closure is a very fitting term when addressing karma, both emotionally and energetically. Karmic relationships can still be considered soul family, but in a roundabout way. The biggest difference between karmic relationships and soul family is that karmic connections are not conscious collaborations. We travel with our soul family, but with karmic partners, it's not by choice. We are magnetically pulled to these connections because they hold aspects of our power or essence that need to be reclaimed and integrated. Karmic bonds are ill-fated. They provide us with the catalyst we require for our soul's evolution and propel us into our dharma by acting like a slingshot. Karmic relationships are meant to hinder us in every way possible until our ego has hit rock bottom. And we are forced to meet whatever is within ourselves that has been denied, repressed, or rejected. So typically anything unconscious. So one could look at karmic relationships as providing the necessary friction that's needed in order to break out of the momentum of their own patterns, AKA their own karma. Although these relationships can lead to extremely positive outcomes if we integrate the lessons they represent. Karmic connections are not carried out from a conscious and loving place, so don't start getting homesick for them. We are tied to these people through deep soul themes until we generate new patterns. Sometimes we choose to incur karma so we can have access to certain experiences. 
If you'd like to know more about this version of karma, let me know in the comments and I can make a video going deeper into it. I hope this has helped your soul's journey in some capacity. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time.